knowing that he knows a lot of guys. And he's the easy target. He's an old man. He's 60 oh, years old, yeah, right? Yeah. And he knows he needs a little bit of money. He's a little short in the restaurant. He's got this historical restaurant in Hollywood. Hemingway's, it's a historical land site. It's a really nice place. So Sal calls my dad because everybody knows I'm the guy. And as far as Italians go, it knows the Cubans and the Colombians. So Sal calls my dad and over to the restaurant and says, Hey, I got a guy that can, they want, uh, what, they want 100 keys a month. All right, first of all, if, if you're in the drug game, and if anybody comes up to you and says that they want 100 keys per month, and you know that these people are just getting started in the dope game, then you need to run away as fast as you can because that's going to be a federal agent. Now, listening to this story, this guy, this interview that I just played is on Fresh Out, Big Hurt's channel, and this guy has a hell of a story. I mean, this guy, oh my God, man. To make a long story short and a short story longer, he actually was mafia connected. He wasn't a made man, but his family was involved. But he actually developed his own relationships in the criminal underworld with the Colombians and got involved in the coke game. And um, let's say that uh, his father was actually picked up by the feds because his father made a, he made a, made a sale of seven keys. This guy right here, his father came to him and said, "Hey, I know somebody who wants a hundred keys a month." And this guy, thinking thinking correctly, said, no, we're not going to give anybody 100 keys at one time. We're going to give them 7 keys. And we're going to break it down into installments. I'm not giving anybody 100 keys at one time. So, long story short, feds end up, they end up being the feds, they bought the keys, and his father gets arrested. And this guy actually went on a run in Taiwan, which is, uh, Taiwan is, uh, technically it's considered China, but it's its own country, filled with Chinese people. So Ty, he goes to Taiwan, he's on the run, he's on the run for these, this, this, this sale of kilos, right? And he actually gets a modeling contract, and he becomes the face of a beer, a beer company. He's actually, his face is plastered all over a beer, a popular beer, that was actually manufactured in the same city that he went on a run from, in Florida. So he's in Taiwan, and he gets this deal to become a model for this beer company. And he asks, hey, is this beer only going to be sold in Taiwan? They say yes. Then when the beer comes out and it has his picture on it, his Milan picture on it, he's the brand ambassador, he looks at the bottle and sees that it's manufactured in the same city that he ran from. That he, that, you know, So he got away from America, went to Mexico, and ended up in Taiwan and Japan. And this guy has a hell of a story. Every time he went to the airport, something happened where they checked his paperwork and he almost got caught. But then he would know somebody, like a Kung Fu instructor in Taiwan. And the Taiwanese airport security would know that instructor, that Kung Fu instructor, and they would let him go. And he, he has a hell of a story. But yeah, if anybody comes to you asking for 100 keys a month, run away.